Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my full review of the Mitch Mason Chronicle. Brand new watch from a brand new watch brand launching on Kickstarter next month, September 2020. Perhaps you've noticed Kickstarter has been a little bit quiet recently, understandable given the current global conditions, but things seem to be heating up. There's a few interesting projects on there at the moment, and I've got a few lined up for review over the next six weeks or so, what I think is some of the best pieces on offer, including this one. Now, I am in a privileged position. I get emails on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. Hey, Jody, how are you doing? I've got a new brand launching, and I would love you to review one on your channel. And believe it or not, I say no far more often than I say Yes, some stuff is just so derivative. We have seen it all a hundred times before. Some stuff is just a dog's breakfast. It's like the owners put every good idea they've ever had into their first watch, which is not a good idea. And some stuff I think is priced ambitiously, shall we say. They're trying to get industry standard profit margins from their first watches, which is just unrealistic. However, occasionally I'll get an email with some photos and I'm like, Oh, yes, please, that. I want some more of that. And indeed, I got an email in February this year from Ben, the owner of Mitch Mason, and I posted a couple of the photos of the watch onto my Instagram, which I don't normally do. I thought it looked fantastic. Quite a lot of Grand Seiko in this design, hence the thumbnail today, which is no bad thing considering this one is under $400. 379 on the early bird. Now, 379, not a drop in the ocean, I appreciate. You're gonna have to think about whether this one is gonna suit you and whether this one is gonna suit your collection, whether you're gonna wear it long term. But if you like the look, I think this is a great first effort from the brand, very impressive. Attention to detail, design, and so on. To be clear, I received two prototypes for two weeks, two months ago, but they will be sending me one free watch in due course in the color of my choice when the campaign ends. Okay, enough waffle today, Jody, already. Let's flip the camera, have a look at these two watches and find out just who Mitch Mason really is. So who is Mitch Mason and what exactly is the Mitch Mason Chronicle? Well, I asked Ben, the brand owner, I said, is there some kind of inspiring story like the Daniel Wellington backstory? I met a guy called Mitch Mason and he told me to follow my dreams and start a watch company. A very nice, proper leather watch roll heel, by the way. And he said, no, a Mitch is a truant, someone who plays hooky, I believe, looking it up, it's an Irish term, and a Mason is a builder. So that was the spirit that he wanted to encapsulate a... Uh, Rebellious Builder? Mm, I'm not sure about that one. I've heard better origin stories, but I've also heard worse, I suppose. At least it's alliterative, it's got a bit of a ring to it, and I like what they've done with the double M logo. And for those of you who get mad about wearing another man's name on your wrist, but I'm sure have no problem with Hugo Boss suits and Calvin Klein underwear, at least Mitch Mason isn't real. So one case, but four different colorways, two different dial designs either a blue or a black with this kind of more contemporary sandwich dial with the logo and a vertical brush finish, and a gray or a cream, both in this printed dial, slightly more vintage looking aesthetic here. These watches are inspired by the field watches of the 1940s, that's what Ben said. He's looking to recreate a kind of rugged everyday watch with that 40s look. Also a chunk of Grand Seiko in the case, specifically the 44 GS from the late 1960s. When I first saw this watch, I thought, God, there's a lot of Grand Seiko in that case design. That is no bad thing, I promise you. And I can definitely see arguments for going for the contemporary one or going for the more vintage look. I think they both look great. So 36 and a half millimeters in diameter and a lug to lug of 43 and a half. Now that is a fairly compact set of dimensions by today's contemporary standards, but I guess it's a fairly large set of dimensions when compared to the watches of the 1940s. So there's a kind of modernizing of a 40s design while still keeping it relatively compact. 20 mil lug width helps to beef it up a little bit, as does a thickness of 13 and a half and that chunky angular Grand Seiko style case. This one on the supplied leather strap weighs in at bang on 80 grams. 
So let's have a look at the case then. It has been pointed out to me that these are prototypes and the standard of finishing is going to be improved considerably for the production units. Do you know what? They don't really need to. I think the finishing on this is pretty good as is. You've got that kind of fine brushing on the top edge of the mid case, high polished everywhere else, fine brushing again on the angular lugs, high polished bezel and a nicely integrated piece of double dome sapphire. Again, they're gonna put a few more layers of anti-reflective undercoating on production units. Mitch Mason signed crown here. It's a kind of Twizzler crown. Again, that's going to be slightly adjusted to make it easier to grip. But you get the idea. This is what the design is going to look like as a whole. I reckon it looks great. You really don't see too many watches at this sub $400 price doing something like this with a case design. Case back is screw on, helping with 200 meters of water resistance. Crown is screwed down as well. Kind of heraldic logo here with the Mitch Mason emblazoned on the top, usual spec sheet, sapphire, crystal, stainless steel, and automatic. The movement for the production units is gonna be a Miyota 9039. That's a Japanese made high beat automatic. I'm sure you're familiar with the Miyota 9000 series. The 9039 is the no date specific. They didn't want a ghost date position, which again is I think another sign that this company is determined to do things right, even with this debut model. All right, let's have a look at these two dials, starting with the more contemporary design of the two, though let's not get carried away. It is still definitely reeking of vintage here. Nice and clean, they haven't overcluttered this one. I guess the last thing you want to do with a relatively small watch, a relatively small dial, is put too many lines of text here. So just the Mitch Mason double M, Mitch Mason logo, Chronicle and Automatic in a nice italic script down on the bottom there. Recessed sandwich, 12, 3, 6, and 9 Arabics. Everything else just printed on. Now, on this one, there's 01, 02, 04, 10, 11. Two digits on each, trying to keep the symmetry there. There's a double train track around the outer edge as well. Now, the handset, I would say kind of cathedral. These are unique to this watch, designed for this watch, with nice pointed syringe tips. Again, it's that kind of old meets new thing. It's an old design in the cathedral style, but there's a bit of a contemporary edge here as well. Now, one other thing, they are gonna shorten that second hand so that it hits the outer edge of the double train track perfectly. Now the more traditional dial, the grey dial and the cream dial is just printed as I said earlier on, no sandwich here. They've also deleted the Mitch Mason logo which just cleans it up a little bit. No zeros here, just one, two, four, five, seven, nine, etc., and round to 10 and 11. Same handset and similarly, they're gonna trim that second hand just a little bit, which I think is a good decision. Nice and clean, looks pretty good. Now, because of the difference in dials, because one is a sandwich dial and the other isn't, there is obviously a bit of a difference in the loom between these two watches as well. These are prototypes. The loom is still pretty good. I guess it's representative of the style, if not necessarily the brightness that you'll get from production units, the sandwich on the left, and and the printed dial on the right. Super Luminova on the hands and the indexes. Certainly par for the course on one of these style of field watches. But let's get them on wrist. Obviously, if 42s and 44s are your daily bread and butter, then perhaps you're not gonna be interested in something this small. I have a personal sweet spot, kind of between 38 and 40, but I have no problems with this one. I enjoy my Saab 033 and my Omega Aquaterra, both in the smaller 38 and a half mil size. This pretty much wears in line with those two. It doesn't really feel like it's any smaller than the Saab or the Aquaterra. The suede strap with the vintage cross stitching on the gray dial model is certainly softer than the leather strap on the blue one. They all come with Mitch Mason bespoke hardware there, a nice kind of matching buckle, kind of complementing the angles of the case. And that's the proper overhead shot. I've got a seven inch wrist, which I tell you in every single video, and I think this slightly smaller size really suits me nicely. You can see the way that that angular case really kind of catches and plays with the light in combination with the high polished bezel as well. A very pleasing effect. And outside you get an idea of how that brush dial on the more contemporary model also looks playing around with the sunlight. This is really gonna benefit from a couple of extra layers of anti-reflective coating on the production units. Moans and niggles then, well, it's Kickstarter. So you pay your money up front and you're waiting several months months for the watch so if you require instant gratification then perhaps this one is not for you the size I guess the size is going to be a big factor in how many units they eventually do sell of this Chronicle model I think there's still plenty of space though on today's market for a watch of this size especially given that it wears a bit chunkier than it suggests 
379 for a Miyota on leather. Oh, perhaps not quite the impulse buy that it would have been had it been closer to 300. As with all micro brands, have a good think about whether this is going to suit you, suit your collection, and whether you're going to be hanging on to it long term. Because if you flip a micro, if you get it wrong and need to sell it, you might not get as much of your money back as if it were from a big brand, for example. So overall then, I think a very impressive little watch and a very impressive debut effort from the company. Clearly, they have set about designing something different. Not a dollar dazzler. I mean, there are plenty of Swiss made dive watches on bracelets with Swiss movements for under 400 US dollars, but they didn't want to do that. They wanted to bring this kind of vintage field watch into the modern era, and I think they've succeeded nicely. I like both. As I said, I think I'll probably be going for the black contemporary one myself. It's a bit different, but there are arguments for all of them. The cream one looks lovely as well. Not going to be for everybody. I appreciate 36 and a half mil, you know, rules a lot of people out. So again, a slightly brave step by the company going out with their first model that isn't a diver and as a size that's going to put some people off. But if you're vaguely inclined towards smaller watches, I think this one is definitely worth a look. So there you have it, Mitch Mason Chronicle. I think one of the best new watches from a new company that I have looked at this year, maybe over the last couple of years. Not a dollar dazzler today, not a spec monster at all, not Swiss made, you know, on leather, Miota 9000 rather than a Swiss movement, but I think the money has gone into the design of this watch. This is certainly not something that you pick out of a catalog and slap your brand over the dial. Very impressive first effort, I must say, from the brand. I wish them well with their campaign and I hope to see them develop and create more designs in a similar vein as this one over the coming months and years. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in a future video, I have no doubt.